Hello all, welcome to Microwave and Radar Engineering Lecture 6 on Double Star Matching. At the end of this lecture, you will be able to explain the concept of Double Star Matching, discuss the steps to determine the value of length of stubs, and solve the problem of Double Star Matching using Smith Chart. The prerequisite for this lecture is the knowledge of Smith Chart, Impedance and Admittance. Now we have already discussed single stub matching in the previous lecture on lecture number 5. Now to overcome those drawbacks of single stub matching, the double stub matching technique is employed. The technique uses two stubs in fixed locations as you can see here of length L1 and L2. Two stubs are used. The distance D1 and D2 is the distance of the first stub from the load and the distance of the second stub from the first stub. This D2 is almost fixed in this double stub matchings either sometimes by 3 lambda by 8 or lambda by 8. Now only the length L1 and L2 are important over here. D1 is also not important. So we will see that instead of the impedances we will use here admittances. So the admittance Y11 which is observed at these two points is nothing but the sum of the admittances of the short circuit stub the admittance of that is denoted by Ys1 and the admittance of the transmission line of length T1 and the load impedance ZL denoted over here as ZT1. Similarly, the second admittance is observed over these two points and the admittance is denoted by Y22 which is equal to the sum of the admittances of this stub and the admittance observed after this length after this point that is up to the load and the load impedance that is denoted over here by the yd2 shown over here with these two equations now to understand the concept of double stub matching let us consider an example and we will solve it to find the value of l1 and l2 over here the terminating impedance zl is given to us that is 100 plus j100 and the characteristic impedance z0 is 50 ohm so from here we can find the value of normalized load impedance because I told you earlier in the lecture 4th and 5th also that the Smith charts deal with the normalized impedance. So the normalized load impedance will be 100 by 50 plus J 100 by 50. Now the first stub is placed at 0 0.40 lambda away from the load. It means D1 is already given to us and the spacing between the two stubs is 3 lambda by 8. So it is also fixed as I told you. So it is fixed at 3 by 8 of lambda over here. So we have to find the values of L1 and L2. Now in the first step, we will plot the normalized load impedance on the Smith chart. As I told you, normalized will be obtained by simply dividing it with the value of Z0. It will come out to be 2 plus J2. So we will look at the two resistance circle, which is this one. And plus J2, that is the impedance circle. And plus is there, it means it will be above the center line and you can see this is 2 so this circle is imaginary circle so it is plus j2 so these two circles are meeting at this point so this is my zl that is 2 plus 2j second is to find the normalized admittance we have already discussed how to find the normalized admittance for a particular impedance so we will draw the vswr circle by putting the arc by putting the compass center at 1 0 and extending an arc up to zl and then we will draw a circle the exactly diametric opposite point of zl on that circle or on the vswr circle will be my yl shown over here as 0 0.25 minus j 0 0.205 now be, uh, before moving further let us first discuss the concept of unit spacing circle what is this unit spacing circle and why we need it if we look into this problem we know that the admittance over here or the characteristic admittance over here is y0 which must be a real value so for any admittance to be made equal to this admittance that value must be again a real and when we consider that admittance to be a normalized admittance then it, we can say that the real part of this y22 must be equal to 1 or simply y22 is equal to 1 plus imaginary term should be 0 so i will write here j0 so this is my target that I want to obtain and from here I can conclude that Y22 is lying on a unit circle because the real part of it is 1. 
similarly if i look at the y11 also this must also again be at the uh, unit circle or to be another way we can say that the real part of the y11 must be equal to 1 but it is not possible for both y22 and y11 to be on the same unit circle because they are separated by a distance given over here as 3 by 8 of lambda it means on the smith chart we must have more than one unit circle so that will be seen in the next slide that how we draw that smith circle but over here we have the given distance between them is 3 by 8 of lambda so we'll make use of it as we know in a smith chart the total rotation will give us 360 degree and that is equal to lambda by 2 it means from here can i find the value of 3 by 8 of lambda yes the value of 3 by 8 of lambda will be equal to 270 degree it means we will have two unit circles which are 270 degree apart by each other so you can see here one unit circle is this react resistance circle with the value shown over here as 1 plus 1 plus j0 because it is a resistance circle so only the resistance or the real part value is important so this is first circle and when i will move with if you see here that this is my central axis so and this is my another axis so when i will have a rotation of 90 degree i will reach to this point when i have a rotation of 180 degree i will reach to this circle which is not visible over here and i'm not drawing it because i'm not concerned with that but when i will have a 270 degree rotation means from here to here that is 270 degree it means at that point i can have a same radius circle noted over here with the black color pen and that is nothing but my unit circle in this case it means the y11 and y22 must lie on these circles which are both of resistance value equal to 1 or the real part of which is equal to 1 so over here we have drawn this unit circle which is 270 degree apart from the basic unit circle so now next is we will find the value of y d1 or simply the position of the first stop so as we know the position of the first stop is 0 0.40 of lambda from the load so we can obtain this value of y d1 by moving on our vswr circle so our zl point has been converted into yl in my previous slides this is my yl equal to 0.25 minus 0 0.25 when i am saying yl it is normalized value of the yl because i am working here in the smith chart it means when i am moving here from the load towards the source then i will move in the clockwise direction and i have to move up to a distance of point for lambda so if i look here at the lambda scale and if i move from 0.458 lambda to the value of 0.358 lambda it will cover a distance of 0.4 lambda so i will move from this point and i will reach to the point of 0.358 of lambda which is 0.4 lambda so this is my point so i will draw a dotted line from the center and i will extend it up to the 0.358 lambda now as we have moved to a distance of 0.4 lambda it means we have reached to this point we know the admittance over here which is denoted over here as y d1 so y d1 will be obtained on this vswr circle which is which can be obtained by simply connecting your center 1.0 with the point on the lambda of 0.358 lambda so by connecting it we have obtained this point and this point is nothing but equal to y d of 1 which has been read over here as 0.55 minus a 1.08 now next is we are going to attach a stub over here it means when we will attach a stub over here the admittance over here will be changed to a new admittance that is y11 which is equal to the admittance of this stub plus the admittance of y d1 it means when i am going to attach a stub this stub is going to reduce my value to only a real value that is as we have discussed in the case of y11 that it is only containing a real value no imaginary term is there it means now from this point that is of y d1 i am moving in such a way that i will reach to this unit circle so this is done in my step 5 to find the value of y11 
now there are two possible solutions from here i can move either in the clockwise direction or in the anti clockwise direction on this circle so when i am moving in the clockwise direction on the imaginary circle i will reach to the point of y11 and if i move in the anti clockwise direction then i will reach to the point of y11 dash i will continue my solution with the value of y11 which can be read on this point as 0.55 minus j of 0.11 now once we have obtained the value of y11 and we know the value of yd1 we can find the value of ys1 which is equal to y11 minus yd1 therefore from the earlier values of my y11 and yd1 i can obtain that my ys1 is equal to j0.97 i'm going back on my slides to check the what are the values of y11 and yd1 you can see here the value of y11 is 0.55 minus j of 0.11 and yd1 is equal to 0.55 minus j of 1.08 so when you will subtract these two values you will get the value of ys1 equal to plus j of 0.97 and similarly for the second solution you will obtain ys1 dash equal to minus j of 0.08 now you have obtained the value of y11 and we have obtained the value of ys1 from here it means once the value of ys1 is obtained that is 0.97 i can find the value of length l1 because it is a short circuit stub so i will start the value of or i will count the value of lambda from the short circuit or from the y minima on my switch chart so we know that y minima is over here so this is my y minima so i will start from here and i will reach to the value of 0.97 so i can read over here that this is my 0.97 you can you know that in the upper half of the smith chart we have the positive imaginary circles or the reactant circles and the lower half we have negative reactant circles this value is a positive so i will look into over here and if the scale is not available exactly at 0.97 so i will approximate it equal to 0.1 or a bit lesser than the point one that is over here and now i have to move from this point in the clockwise direction up to the point of my 0.97 j that is the reactant circle of 0.97 denoted over here as ys1 so this distance will or this value in my terms of lambda will give me the value of l1 so when i will read the scale of lambda and i will complete it or i can find the difference of these two values it will come out to be equal to 0.25 plus 0.123 of lambda which is equal to 0 0.07 0 0.373 now why i am doing here 0.25 because once i complete the half of the scale over here this value will restart from zero so it will read only if i go and read this value it will read only equal to 0.23 but this value is up to this part only i have to consider take into consideration this part also so i am adding here 0.25 and similarly if i would have done it for the second solution of point of minus j 0.08 then i will find this value on the lower half of it and then i will again find the value of lambda so that will be my second solution i am not going to discuss that now in the eighth step i am going to find the value of y d2 now i have obtained the value of y11 y d2 is nothing but at a 3 by 8 of lambda distance so as i have obtained this point of y11 now i am going to move it in the clockwise direction and i will give it to a rotation of 3 by 8 of lambda you can see here that this circle is my unit circle I'm drawing it with the red color over here this is my one unit circle which is at 270 degree apart from an another circle if you see here with the black color in your smith chart you will find one more unit circle and these two are 270 degree apart by each other it means if i have to see my y d2 i have to move from the y1 to a 270 degree in the clockwise direction so i am moving from y11 to an angle of 270 degree and i will reach to a point which is nothing but a point on the another or you can say on the 
unit circle you can see on this over here i am going to cut at 250 so it is quite obvious as i am moving from one unit circle and i am giving it to a rotation of 270 definitely i will reach to another unit circle because this red color unit circle was obtained by giving a rotation of 270 degrees to this yellow colored circle so now i am moving again back to the 270 degree in the clockwise direction i would reach to the previous yellow colored unit circle it means at this point i will read the value of yd2 so this value of yd2 will come out to be equal to 1 minus j of 0.61 you can read it from here it is 1 minus j of 0.61 that is for the first solution this is for the second solution now once you have obtained the value of yd2 you know that y11 or sorry y22 must be equal to 1 it means it means if we want to have a y22 equal to 1 then can we find the value of ys2 because y22 is equal to yd2 plus ys2 so by simply subtracting these two values from the value of y22 that is y22 is equal to 1 over here because now this is the final value over where i'm going to reach up to my characteristic impedance of, and the normalized case it is equal to 1 now i want my value of y or you can know you know that y22 is equal to yd2 plus y s2 that is the admittance of the second step so y s2 can be calculated by this that is y22 minus yd2 so yd2 is this one and y22 is one so i will get y s2 is equal to plus j of 0 0.61 so again on this mid chart i can see or i can find the value of 0.61 you can see here it is positive it means it will lie in the upper half and i will again approximate it for the value of 0 0.6 approximate it equal to 0 0.6 if we see here this is 0 0.6 scale so it is slightly greater than 0 0.6 and this is 0 0.7 so i am assuming this point to be over here 0 0.61 i will extend a line and i will cut it on the uh, lambda axis also now what i am going to do here as i said that this is the value of the stub and the stub is connected or short circuited at the one end it means i am going to move from this point to the point of my y s2 that is this point and i will read the value of lambda and when you will read the value of lambda over here it will come out to be again 0.25 up to this point and then it is equal to 0 0.087 after that so the sum of this will come out to be equal to 0 0.337 of lambda and similarly for the second solution it, i have y s2 dash is equal to minus j 2.60 you can also obtain this point on this mid chart and calculate the value of this but i am again restricting my answer to this value only so i have obtained the value of l2 over here so by this i have obtained both the values of l1 and l2 you can see here the l1 has came out to be equal to 0.373 of lambda and l2 equal to 0.337 of lambda so now by the precepts i have told you we can solve any problem of double stub matching now after the end of this lecture you are able to explain the concept of double stub matching you are now able to discuss the steps to determine the value of the length stubs that is both l1 and l2 and you have successfully solved the problem of double stub matching using smith chart thank you